Good afternoon, wherever you are. Good afternoon, good morning, good night, good evening. Um, where I am, it is um, afternoon here in the States, but it's a beautiful day. It's um, Sabbath, it's Saturday, but it's the Sabbath. It's the Lord's day of rest. It's the day that we should be even more intentional to be still to seek his face to seek his presence to get in our word to do bible studies at home with our families our children just to really get to a place where we prioritize his presence and that we are seeking him like never before in this hour in this season but this day is a holy day that he set apart from the foundations from genesis 1 and as we continue to go forth we got to understand that even though we live in this western world um where i am it's western um and a lot of the western ways of christianity um, is very different from Eastern Christianity, right from where the Bible or where Christianity originally originated over in um, the Easter sphere of the world. And they still a lot of times they still are upholding those those um, the feast of Moaz. They're still upholding the um, the the festivals and the principles and the calendar. They're still keeping the same way, the same order that God instituted from the beginning. And that's why we see a lot of times they're blessed. That's why you can look upon um, the Jewish people as a nation. And even though they have not um, been their eyes have not yet been opened to the Messiah. They're still waiting, right? However, they because they still hold to the principles, come on somebody, they still reap the manifestation of the blessing because the principles work. Listen, I'm going to repeat that again. They still receive the benefit and the manifestation of the blessing because the principles work. It is because a principle is just that it is something to be worked. And if you work it, you will see the results. And a lot of times as Christians and as, and as Westernized Christians, we miss out on a lot of the blessings and promises that God has for us because we are not sensitive to the to the signs and to the times and to the seasons, right? He uh, he instituted certain things to to speak to and point to the season. That's why we have the Moaz or the feast, right? That's why we have the the times that we you know particularly set time apart. Like um, right now, we're entering to Pentecost Sunday tomorrow, and that's the time of in the, the birth of the early church when the Holy Spirit, when Jesus sent the Helper, and He came and He descended right upon the one hundred. 120 and they received power right and it was like a like a mighty rushing wind and clothes of, of tongues of fire fell on them right because they understood the time and they were in the right place to receive the benefit of the blessing amen and so when you begin to seek out the word i remember some years ago i didn't even know nothing about feast i didn't know nothing about moaz i didn't know about his holy convocations i didn't know about his sacred times right that he said in the beginning these are the lord's feasts and you are to keep them forever to all generations we are supposed to keep them as christ followers but a lot of times we are in this side of the uh, of the earth and a lot of churches and places may not talk about it or teach on it or people look and say well that's old testament we're no longer under the law well the lord did not say it was a law to keep his holy convocations he said these are the lord's feast the lord's holy convocations and you are to keep them so the because it's we're under the new covenant never negated and it did not um it, it did not um stop us from having to honor and observe the feast times and see those people who um do observe the feast times even over here in, in in the in the states you will you will notice a pattern that they receive the blessing not because they're extra special or not because they're more holy or not because they're more anointed sometimes it's simply because of your obedience when you tap into the things of god when you begin to serve seek god on another level when the lord begins to reveal a thing to you and you receive it and you act on it right when he began to reveal to me about you know the jewish new years the jewish calendar you know the the feast and the moats he started revealing that to me in my time uh, in my season where i wasn't even going to church but i was spending 
time in his presence. I was spending time with him every day, hours on end, and he was revealing these things to me. So then when he connects me to a ministry, um, they are absolutely in alignment with observing the Lord's feast. So I attend a ministry where, where they teach it, they observe it. Um, and um, it is a beautiful thing because that's something that the Lord revealed to me. And so there's a time uh, right now that we're in. This is Shavuot. We're leading up to Pentecost tomorrow. And in Shavuot, what you will find is God gave instructions. There was a lot of preparation for the promise. Even when Israel came out of Egypt, right? There was a lot of things that the Lord had to do. That's why they had to go on a journey. That's why they, not necessarily why they ended up in the wilderness, but that's why God used the wilderness. They ended up in the wilderness for their own disobedience and their own unbelief. However, God used it because he understood that there were some things he still needed to purge out of them. There were some things from Egypt that he still needed to take out. There were some people who still wasn't going to be able to handle or occupy the promise. So he had to allow their lifespans to die out. He, the Lord had some things to do in preparation. And so we're in a time of preparation and we've been in this 50 days of Shavuot. We've been in this 50 days from, from Passover um, to, to Pentecost tomorrow. And these are some high holy times. And this is a time where the Lord really is speaking. You know, the Lord really is moving. The Lord has been given a lot of instructions to a lot of us because the Lord is trying to prepare us for the promise. Oh, somebody, I know I just kind of went in and I just kind of, because I feel the anointing because we're in the hour, right? We're almost like, it's like we're in the 11th hour where God is like, things are ramping up because you're on the cusp. You're about to cross over. But before you can enter in, God is saying that there are some instructions he has gave you. There are some instructions he's about to give you that you need to make sure that you complete. There are some things he's going to reveal to you about yourself that you may need to repent from or that you may need to ask him to come help you to release it and to cast it unto him, right? Because there are things that cannot go into the promised land. And so before I get all the way into it, because I just see that the Lord just kind of we in there right now already. I do want to welcome all my loyal listener, anybody who get on the live. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Um, today's episode. Um, for all my loyal listeners, thank you so much. Hey girl. Hey, how are you? How you doing? I hope that all is well. I hope that the Lord has been really doing great and, um, and mighty things in your life. I hope that the podcast have been blessing you. I would love to hear from you. Please feel free. If you're listening on this platform, Podbean, you can connect with me. You can leave a comment directly on this platform. If you're listening to on any other platform, if there's a on Spotify, sometimes I um, list questions or different things, but there's a way you can comment and leave an engage on Spotify. Um, but if you cannot on the platform that you're listening to, I always leave my email, my contact information in the description box. You will feel free to email me for your prayer requests, testimonies. Um, if you just, you know, want to um, connect with me, please feel free to do so. Um, and also, um, just like comment, share, Please share because that's the way that um, this the podcast get more visibility. The message can reach more people. There may be people who need to hear what the Lord is saying today. And the best way for them that to get before them is when you share. Or if you know somebody personally, please share, like, comment, leave a review if the if the um, podcast is blessing you. Um, but yes, that is absolutely how you can partner with me and this podcast to help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Also, I want to say thank you to every new listener. I'm seeing a lot of new people download stream. I'm seeing people download in other countries. I appreciate you guys. I see it. I notice it. I thank you, Lord. And I pray that the Lord continues to speak through me to you and to your situation. And I pray that the word comes forth with power and demonstration. I pray that the Lord is speaking and ministering to your heart and that you are getting the answers or the encouragement or the edification that you need. And so I just thank you guys so much for continuing to to support the podcast and helping me as the Lord has mandated me to use this as a ministry, right? To minister and, and just re reveal to you guys what it is that he is speaking um, through me or to me even in Jesus name. So I just thank you all. I thank you so much for um, joining our community. Um, this is a community of women where we are redefining a woman's worth. We, a lot of us have come from, you know, trauma or we've come from abuse or we come from, you know, different backgrounds and situations 
situations and circumstances that's taken away from our identity. It has caused holes in our soul. It has caused wounds in our soul, right? And so the Lord is saying, restore, 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 restoration. He wants to restore you like the woman with the issue of blood. He wants you to stop leaking and oozing and bleeding like the woman with the infirmity for 18 years. He wants you to be made whole. And so the Lord it's given me a mandate to bring restoration and to help us to redefine our worth, not according to our past and not according to our mistakes and not according to our history, but according to his word and what he's doing and what he said about us. And so this is what this community is. This is a safe place, a judgment free zone. We all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but we are here seeking to live a life of wholeness and purity and abstinence as we are waiting on the Lord at to, to manifest his promises in our life. And as we're serving and just being servants of the most high God, right? And because there, it comes with a mandate to live a lifestyle of righteousness. Amen. And so that is what we're here doing. We are all being equipped so we can go forth and carry out the ministry, the mission, the purpose that he has for each and every one of us. So thank you so much. And welcome, welcome, welcome to the Purity After Promiscuity podcast, where we are redefining a woman's worth. I'm your host, Jenna Renee, and I just thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I believe this is your season. And if you know that the Lord has been speaking to you about your season of promise, a lot of times we hear a word or we hear the word promise, and we always want to receive that. But you got to be wise to know that every every word ain't for everybody and everybody not in their promised season. Some people just inter- getting out of Egypt. Some people are just entering into the wilderness, right? Some people are in different places and spaces. So it's up to you to go back to the Lord and take the word back to the Lord and say, hey, Father, is this for me? What does this mean? Can you give me more details? Can you expound on that, right? Can you confirm this if this is for me? And if it's not for you, be encouraged. It's okay because then you will get to a season of walking into your promise. We all have to go through the different seasons. And so don't be discouraged if you feel like you're seeing other people rejoicing and other people getting blessed and other people getting the manifestation of their prayers. That is okay because we all have a season. There's a timing. There's a time and a place for everything under the sun. That's Ecclesiastes 3. So there will come a time where it will be your due season. But don't stop sowing. Don't stop serving. Don't stop blessing. Don't stop believing right? Don't stop being faithful because those are the seeds and the currency that you need to enter into and occupy your promise. But this particular episode today is for people who are about to walk into, you're actually about to cross over any day now, anytime. Um, And this is something the Lord has already spoke to you personally. This is not me giving you any, um, you know, new news, right? This should not be new to you. This should not be, you know, some, some new revelation. This should be confirmation because God speaks first. I don't never want to be the voice you hear first. Let let the Lord speak to you in your personal time, right? And then he'll send someone else to confirm what he said. But the Lord has already spoken to you and said, you, this is your season. You have done well. You have been faithful with little. You have endured the process. You've went through the stripping. You've been in the wilderness. You've allowed him to come and to process you and to shape and mold you because he's the powder and you're the clay. You have submitted to him. You've been in a place where you have just allowed him to, to just have a gr- do a great work in you right he's been preparing you he has been um he has been uprooting things he's been tearing things down but he's also been building and planting because he's a god of balance so this is for you this is for you who know god whatever he spoke to you i don't know it could be marriage it could be you know a new home it could be a career it could be a business it could be ministry it could be a child it could be healing in your body right it could be you know relocating it could be a number of things whatever your personal promise is right but whatever that is god has been speaking to you and he's been giving you instruction over these last months or even over these last years but one thing we got to be aware of that even when we get to the cusp when we're at the pinnacle where we're literally about to cross over we got to endure to the end you have you cannot get to this point and begin to give up or to shrink back or to get too relaxed because sometimes we feel like okay well i've done everything that the father told me to do i'm doing everything you know i've sacrificed here i've obeyed i've repented there you know i've I've turned away from my evil here. You know, I've, I've given this up for the gospel, for the Lord. I've done this. I've done that. Right. I followed. But don't don't take for granted, because in this last hour, God is going to release 
a specific instruction or maybe some specific instructions for you to follow and you have to stay at his feet keep staying in his presence don't give up don't shrink back don't relent because then the enemy will come in in this last hour and try to get you to give up or try to get you to thwart the promise that is what he wants to do because he can't take your promise but he wants to get you out of position so you don't receive your promise because he knows that god is the god of righteousness he's a god of order right obedience is better than sacrifice so you have to understand being obedient through to the end right and even in the promise being obedient staying at the feet of jesus continuing to pursue and seek the kingdom of heaven with all in all his righteousness first right continuing to keep god at the forefront and don't forget him that is one thing that god continued to say to the children of israel when he was preparing to get them into the promise do not forget the lord thy god do not forget the lord thy god and the thing that grieved his heart the most is they forgot him it's not necessarily because they sinned they commit idolatry they were stiff neck hard-headed disobedient the main thing that grieved his heart the most is because they forgot him it's like if you you have a child and you do everything for your child you sacrifice you've you've went over and beyond to provide everything they needed right you've been there you supported them you know you ain't miss a beat you was always there for your child and then the moment they go and they get some success they forget about you and how heartbreaking that would be and that's how god feels once he has done all of these things for us when he's finally come through on the blessing when he's taken us into the promise when we get the success when we get the marriage when we get you know the business when we get the um the influence when we get you know the promotion when we get the things that we have been leaving god for but then we forget him that grieves his heart and so we got to be sure to make to be able to stay in the same posture having that pure heart having that heart of obedience having that heart to seek him first be willing to forsake everything if you have to if that to stay at his feet right you got to make sure your heart is right and you got to make sure that you have an ear to hear what he's saying right there are some things that the lord has been revealing to me this very week that i just did not know about myself right i've been going through it you know i've been having a really rough time like this week i've tried to throw in the towel several times i was very discouraged i was just disappointed i was just kind of like lord i don't want to do this no more if this is what it's going to cost me if this is what the anointing cost me if this is what the my this destiny cost me then i don't want it because it's too hard it's too much it felt like it was crushing me you know it was killing my faith you know i was finding myself to the point where i was just just exhausted spiritually exhausted physically i couldn't pray and i was just like in this dark place and i just kept being like i can't do it i was crying i was crying i'm like lord i don't even want to do this no more and the lord was not taking me out the situation but what he began to do is because then i'm asking questions because that's something that i feel like we don't do enough of to seek him for real like ask him i'm like why am i going through this what is this what is this why am i here right and i begin to get revelation of there was some things within me that i was not aware of that he needed to bring to the surface so then now i can uproot it and so he can now um that, that he could come in and he can heal me and so one of the first things that he revealed to me and see i'm saying this because this is going to help somebody and this is going to um probably give more some clarity to what the instruction or what god is doing even in your in your season right now and and you might be experiencing what i've been experiencing well the first thing he revealed to me is rejection um because i got so discouraged and disappointed because i went out on um, stepped out on faith i apply you know um many of you may know i think i've said it on here but me and my children are believing for a home we kind of got you know displaced out of the home we were living in and it was in a very um traumatic way a very difficult way you know it, it, it wasn't necessarily a plant thing but we had to leave and we had to leave in the haste we had to leave quickly and and in and out you know i experienced a lot of disrespect i experienced a lot of you know um you know of aggression from the um, landlord all kind of things right and i just was so totally flabbergasted however we're in a place where we're believing god and so i applied for this place it was beautiful it was every single thing on my list even 
it was exceeding and abundantly, right? The pictures didn't do it justice. When we looked, when I looked at it, it got better and better. It was just amazing. It was beautiful. It was everything. It had things that nobody knew that I desired, but God, it was an area. It was, it was everything that I want in a home. And so I, in faith, I applied for, I, I received favor with the guy who was showing it. I received some favor with the um, owner because at first they said no pets, but I do, we have a little dog and I let them know like, Hey, I have a little dog. Would that be okay? Cause it's a small breed dog. And they came back and they said, yeah, that's fine. So I was like, this must be God. Cause I'm experiencing favor. This is everything on my list. This is stuff that only the Lord knew that I wanted, or I discussed with my children, all of these things. And so I was just believing. And then I got a word Monday morning. Um, and it said, God is releasing your promise right now. God is releasing houses right now. He's releasing whatever you need, whether it's a house property, whether it's apartment, whatever you need for you, whatever you're believing for, God is releasing it. Now he is doing it now. All you just have to believe you have to believe. So I was just like, wow. So this was Monday morning. And I was just like, I felt like that was even more confirmation. Long story short, not shortly after I received um, that I came across that particular word about God giving um, houses, did I receive the email from the property owner saying that they were not able to um, accept my um, application for the property. And let me tell you something. I lost it. Okay. I was, I, I instantly like up until then I was full of faith. I was feeling good that morning. I had was ministering to people, you know, all kind of stuff. Everything started out wonderful. And all of a sudden in an instant with just that one bad report, I, I literally, I was totally depleted of faith. I was totally depleted of belief. I was totally discouraged. I was just literally, then it felt like a heaviness came over me, a depression, a heavy, you know, all of these things. And I just was like in this, I just went into a downward spiral. And so, um, I really didn't want to go and, and, and attend our meeting at church that we, um, have with young adults. I didn't want to do nothing because I was so, so discouraged. And in my time of being obedient anyway, even though I said I didn't want to go, um, the Lord, you know, led me to go and I went. And as I was there, he began to minister to me. And he was saying, because we even were talking about faith and like, how do you handle when you don't get what you want or get what you believe in for? So that's even, it was so interesting because we're talking about that in that meeting. So I said, I wasn't going to speak because I was just like, I just was in a place where I'm like, I don't have nothing to say. I'm so discouraged. I'm, my heart is so broken. I'm so hurt. Like I'm, I feel so hopeless and helpless. I feel forsaken and disregarded. It, right. So I didn't even want to say nothing. But as I was there, the Lord began to minister to me and he began to reveal that I still have rejection issues. There are still some wounds in me that are stemming from rejection because he began to say, why do I feel like because I didn't get what I was believing for or get what I expected that that mean it was a rejection? It's like, how do I know he wasn't protecting me? How do I know that there's not something behind the scenes that I don't know about? How do I know that he just don't have something better? But instead of me having a posture of, okay, Lord, it's not this thing. It must be something else. Thank you, Lord God, for protecting me. Or thank you, Lord God, for, you know, preserving me for the best that you have for me. I totally went into, you know, feeling rejected. And so he revealed that to me and it was just like, wow, like I had no idea. Um, then he also revealed to me that I still like to control everything. And, you know, I, I get an, I, I, he'll give me a desire and put it in my heart but then I'll try to create the path of how it's supposed to come to pan out. And he brought that scripture to me. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but only the Lord knows the path. And so it's one thing for God to put a desire in our heart, but God also knows the way into which we are to get to that, get to that destination. And so when you begin to create your own path or try to create an Ishmael, you got to expect it to come back and it, and it to, you know, um, not go the way you wanted it to go. Even Sarah and Abraham, Sarah had this grand idea. Ishmael was created, but it did not, the situation did not turn out the way she anticipated it. And she ended up getting angry and felt, you know, resentful and was, and, and kicked Hagar and Ishmael out, right? So a lot of times when we try to create our own path, we end up in disappointment. And so the Lord was revealing these things to me. And I was just like, oh, wow. Um, he also revealed to me this week um, that I was dealing with um, insecurity, right? That, and lack of confidence and, um, and, and still dealing with things within my self-esteem. And I'm like, well, Lord, I, I just didn't see that because I've come a long way, right? I've been redefining my worth. I've worked on myself. I've been, I've been going through healing. I went to, um, 
counseling you know i've just been really being intentional about loving on myself working on myself i've been doing other things i'll be feeling good about myself so i just didn't see it but i i i received the word that god was revealing to me about that and i began to take it to him and he just kind of began to unveil it and show me that i need that these are areas that before i walk into my promise he needs me to totally be healed he needs me to totally be healed of my rejection issues he need me to totally be secure and confident in him and who he is and who i am in him but also confident in who and in in, in in my self-esteem confident in my worth and my value right he needs me to be that way also he revealed to me that um i operate in control that i want to control everything and manipulation um and these are again these are things that i was unaware of that it, it never dawned on me i never thought about it i never looked at it like that but as he revealed it to me i was, i immediately was like oh my gosh you're absolutely right um and even me wanting to be my own god so these are things that the lord in this last in these last hours was revealing to me this week did it hurt yes was it uncomfortable yes did i feel like it was crushing me yes did i want to give up yes and but god is a good god he is so good and he doesn't want you to take wounds he don't want you to take unhealed trauma especially when you're thinking about the promise period but if your promise is going to um include marriage the last thing you want to do is take rejection issues into your marriage the last thing you want to do is take your low self-esteem into your marriage or insecurity into your marriage the last thing you want to do is take control and manipulation in your marriage because then you're going to find yourself operating in witchcraft because that's what that is because one thing witchcraft is is not just casting spells and potions and chants and incantations and curses it's also just simply manipulation it is you trying to control the outcome of something or someone other than what its natural free will or natural um, result would be you're trying to manufacture the result to be what you want right so instead of you allowing a person to make their own choice you're trying to convince them and coerce them you're using manipulation whether it's emotional manipulation where there's intimidation whether it's fear right but you're trying to get them to conform to what you want you're trying to get the situation to be what you want instead of submitting to whatever the lord is going to allow it to be and the lord would begin to reveal this to me and i'm like oh my god i was operating in witchcraft because when we don't call the thing what it is it's hard to repent from it me personally i don't want nothing to do with witchcraft i ain't no witch i don't like no witchcraft i hate witchcraft because i hate what god hate right and so I don't got nothing to do and don't want nothing to do with witchcraft. So the moment I call it what it is, I'm like, no, I got to repent. Take this out, Lord. What do I need to do? Do I need to fast more? Do I need to pray more? Please help me. I repent. I renounce it because I don't want nothing to do with the kingdom of darkness. But until you begin to be able to identify a thing and call it what it is, it's easier for you to keep on kind of holding on to it. If I just say, mm, I just like to control a little bit. Mm, I just like to manipulate a little bit. Then that's a little more easier to go down but if i look at myself and be like nope you operate in witchcraft it's like the devil is a liar no not today and so these are the areas of my life that the lord was saying i need you to deal with this i need you to deal with this right now because if you take this into the promise you're going to begin to uh allow destruction into the promise the enemy will have a foothold he'll have a door could you imagine me going into a marriage with rejection and every time my husband maybe don't answer the phone or don't say what i want him to say i'm feeling rejected and i'm retreating and then i'm putting i'm, I'm shutting down and i'm being silent and i'm ready to throw in the towel like no that is not the way god wants us to enter into these god ordained kingdom marriages right you are needing to be secure and confident in who you are in god period and who he created you to be whether you or with another person or not you should be able to, to to hear no and it don't make you go into rejection it should be okay no it's not always it's not always rejection delay is not denial right but when you are dealing with rejection wounds everything to you is rejection someone could be trying to help you but you're gonna see it as rejection right and so the the lord began to show me that these are the things that he needs to do in my life in this time as he's preparing me to enter into the promise and so i know for many of you you're in that same type of place where there is what, what you need to deal with or the instruction he's giving you is you need to deal with the emotional aspect of your life maybe you've 
started getting physically fit, maybe start working out already. Maybe you got your body together. Maybe you eat right already. You be, you changed your, your diet and your lifestyle already in that way. But God is saying, okay, now I need to work on the internal because it's the internal that is really going to determine how you manage and maintain the promise. Because truth be told, you can go into the promise and not be physically fit, but you can't go into the promise and not be spiritually fit and keep it. And so the Lord is saying that for his daughters and even his sons, because men go through rejection, men have wounds, men have trauma, men operate in manipulation and control. Men go through the same thing. We don't think that, but they do. God is saying he's trying to do with your soul. He is trying to restore your soul. David said in, in Psalm 23, and the Lord restoreth my soul. Why? Why is the Lord restoring his soul? What is our soul? It is our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect. So God needs to restore your mind. He needs to restore your emotions. He needs Needs to restore your intellect your will your will you don't need to control everything everything don't have to be the way you want it to be you shouldn't have to feel like you got to manipulate things to get what you want you should be able to trust that god is withholding no good thing from the upright and the righteous but if you don't have the right mindset if you don't have a mind of christ if you're not able to think like God, like, and again, his ways are not our ways, his thought and our thoughts. But when you become one with him and you have that mind of Christ and you have a sound mind, then you're able to see things like he see it. And you don't think everything he doesn't do for you is rejection or that he don't love you. Because that was my next thing I went to. Like, I don't feel like you love me, you know, because you're allowing me to go through this, this, and this. I'm always experiencing disappointment. Things never go the way I want them. Every time I believe for something, it don't happen. I went down that whole spiral why because that was rejection talking and so god is trying to prepare you emotionally he's trying to restore your soul so you are able to to receive maintain and manage the promise so you are ever able to prosper and all will go well with you while you're in the promise right and so that even when you experience obstacles and opposition even when you may hear a, a no even when you don't get what you want you don't completely fall apart and give up and throw in the towel and give the enemy give your dominion over to the enemy like adam did right the enemy cannot take the dominion right he could not take that authority from adam but what he had to do was he had to put adam in a position position where Adam handed it over to him, even though Adam did not know that's what he was doing. Adam did not know that once he ate of that forbidden fruit, once he committed that sin, that he was going to transfer his authority and dominion over to the enemy. A lot of times we don't realize when we don't stand firm on the word, when we don't continue to be steadfast and movable, always abounding, when we continue, when we don't continue to endure to the end, when we don't remain faithful, when we don't remain obedient, when we give into our feelings because yes your feelings gonna tell you give up this too hard it's been too long god ain't coming he don't see p time he done forgot you know he you overlooked your your feelings gonna tell you a lot of things but when you don't give into your flesh and you give into the spirit you're able to have that spiritual wherewithal and that fresh wind and that fire and sometimes you have to ask for it but when you don't stand when you the, the bible tells us in ephesians 6 and above all else when you then are everything you can do to stand stands keep standing right when you don't keep standing you and you begin to retreat or you give up and you throw in the towel you you transfer your authority you transfer your dominion you transfer your promise over to the enemy and so God is saying that he wants to restore your soul and he's trying to prepare you to enter into the promise. This is your preparation. I don't know who it's for, but you will know if it's for you, it'll resonate. It'll make sense. It'll bring clarity. It'll be, bring context to your situation. But God is trying to restore you so you are able to be whole as you walk into the promise because the promise is here. Some people are already in their promise. Some people have already walked into it. Some people already are starting to see manifest station and so god is doing this and it's a quick work right god is doing it kind of rapidly if you submit and surrender to the process so i hope this bless you all um it certainly blessed me but just know god is good he's faithful don't let the enemy get you distracted get you off course don't give into your flesh don't give into your emotions because they they will 
they will deceive you, right? And so I just pray that you all um, just continue to seek God and continue to press in and keep standing. Don't give up. Don't give the enemy no power. Don't give him no place. Stand firm on your promise. Stand firm on the word of God. Keep praying. Keep worshiping. Keep praising. Keep reading the word. Keep fasting. Whatever, whatever the Lord has called you to do this hour, don't give up. Endure to the end. You will reap if you fail not. And he's wanting to carry you over into the promise. You are right there at the Jordan. Come on, somebody go and read in Joshua. Um, I don't, I maybe around Joshua six, I'm not sure. Don't quote me, but when they were at the Jordan and they were literally getting ready to cross over into the land of Canaan and cross over into the promised land, you're right at that place. And God is saying, don't get distracted. Don't get discouraged. Keep your eyes on him. Allow him to do the good work that he began in you, that he's going to complete until Christ Jesus, allow him to shape and mold you, allow him to heal those areas, those wounds, those secret places, those deep places that only you and him know, allow him into that be honest with him reveal to him how you feel reveal to him what happened to you reveal to him what you're going through reveal to him the details give it all to him don't hold nothing back whatever it is whatever happened to you whatever the trauma whatever the disappointment whatever the abuse whatever happened to you do not be afraid to be totally naked and unashamed before God because that's where your healing is going to come from do not be afraid give it to him invite him in let him come with the healing balm of Gilead and begin to heal you amen so i just pray again that this podcast today that today's episode preparation for the promise blesses you and i pray that the lord will bless you and keep you i pray that the lord will make his face to shine upon you be gracious to you and grant you his peace in the name of jesus and always remember that your past does not define you it develops you and you are worthy